Psalm 50, 15 says, Call on me when you are in trouble, and I will rescue you, and you will give me glory. Matthew 11:28. 28, Are you tired? Are you worn out? Burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. James 5, 15, The prayer of faith will save the sick person, and the Lord will restore him to health. God will rescue, recover, and restore. Welcome to the Faith Alive Show. My name is Pastor Brent. We are concluding our three-part series on why Christmas. Welcome to The Right Choice. On today's episode, you will be given multiple answers to the questions I ask. What will be the right choice? All right, you guys ready to play? Here we go. Question number one. What do you do when Uncle George takes all the gravy and it's his third helping? Do you? Ask him to leave your house? Do you take back his gift? Or do you walk in love? All right, folks, question number two. What do you do when your mother-in-law buys you another ugly sweater? Do you tell her it's too small and ask for the receipt? Do you laugh out loud when you see the sweater? <laughs> or do you go and give her a hug and wear it for the rest of the day? All right, folks, last but not least, question number three. What do you do when grandpa tells you the same Christmas story every year? Do you pretend you are sleeping because you ate too much? Do you tell him you don't want to hear that story again? Or do you sit and listen to the story like it's the first time he said it? All right, folks, that's all we have for today's episode. We'll see you guys next time on The Right Choice. Let's go back to the sermon. Let's turn to Luke chapter 1, verse 26, and we'll read from there. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man named Joseph in the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and the angel came to her and said, Rejoice, favored woman, the Lord is with you. But she was deeply troubled by this statement, wondering what kind of greeting this could be. I want you to notice first that this, this lady is a virgin, obviously, but she's also, Joseph is from the house of David. And I remember last week we were talking about the prophetic word that came, that, that this seed that would come uh, from Adam and all the way down through history for many, many years would come through the house of David. So it's interesting they put that in there because they're trying to let us know, listen, this prophetic word is being fulfilled right before our very eyes here. So I, I really think that's great that for 4,000 years, this word that was given back in Genesis that the Lord spoke to the serpent is now coming to pass. What an awesome, exciting happening. So when you read these Christmas stories or, you know, we see the nativity scene or even a local Christmas tree that you're going to see, we need to kind of thank God for that right now, that there's a fruition of what he spoke many thousands of years ago. And that is our salvation is coming through the line of the tribe of Judah, through David. So I think that's really exciting. Let's keep reading. Then it says, Then the angel told her, Do not be afraid, Mary. For you have found favor with God. I love that. He has found favor. She has found favor with God. I mean, yeah, that's 4,000 years of waiting that God has been trying to get this plan of his to come to full effect. And now it's happening. The angel finally comes and he's excited about it. He said, listen, something's happening here that's going to finish off 4,000 years of God's planning. 4,000 years of his working through mankind and in kings and people and priests. You know, good, bad, ugly, everything going on here. And finally, it's coming to pass. What an awesome time. Christmas should be a time of celebration, shouldn't it? And it says here, now listen, you you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call his name Jesus. There he is. There's the deliverer. There's the seed of Adam, the seed of David, the, the seed of Judah that's been prophesied. That will, that will destroy the works of Satan, that will crush his head, that will strip him of all earthly authority. I think this is a wonderful, wonderful verse. I think we don't, we don't really read 
um, these things with the same kind of intensity and enthusiasm we, as we once did, we can grow familiar with the Christmas story. And I, I'm saying don't get familiar with it. Instead, be thankful for it because God has done something great here. His name, Jesus, he will be called great. He will be called the son of the most high. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom will have no end. That is a, a direct quotation from Isaiah 9, verse 7 to 9 that we spoke about, that we spoke last time on the program. So the, de the angel is quoting those words and saying, listen, you are the fruition of this whole thing. And I think that's awesome that 4,000 years has gone by and God is doing a mighty work. So, you know, he has kept his word to Adam and Eve. That, and what was the word to Adam and Eve? He said that you have been given dominion of this planet. You can, you have authority over everything. Be fruitful, multiply, subdue everything. Everything's under their feet. They blew it. But you know what? God in his mercy said, even though uh, uh, Eve blew it many years ago. He says, my mercy will come through a woman, you know, named Mary many, many years later. And, and through woman, the redemption of mankind will come through the woman. What a merciful God. What, a, what an awesome God that we serve. And so I think it's just great. And Jesus is the son of man. He's the son of God. He's the total fulfillment of the prophetic word that first came in Genesis many thousands of years ago. So this birth that's going to happen is actually the first birth pangs of Satan's downfall. And we need to understand that that's why Satan fought so hard, you know, that Jesus could not, you know, be birthed. He fought so hard, but in so many ways, you know, to try and thwart God's plan. But you can't, you can't uh, thwart God's plan. When he says it's going to work, it's going to work. Hi, and welcome to Kids Talk. Today we're gonna to ask some children what Christmas means to them and different questions about Christmas. And let's see what interesting things they have to tell us. Who is baby Jesus? And God. Why did baby Jesus come at Christmas? To us. Why do we have Christmas? Because we love Christmas. What do we do at Christmas? We get some presents. We even open them put a star on your tree. What do you do at Christmas? I open presents. No way. Yes, I do. I brought a lot, a lot of toys. I always say I got too much toys. I got lots of toys. Lots of toys? <laughs> lots. A lot. A too much. And lots. Do you decorate your tree? What do you put on it? Flowers, um, stars, and other stars. And you even can go out and play and build a snowman too. You like building snowmen? How big would he be? Taller. Would your snowman be that big? No. No? I'm just going to make a medium. A medium one. How big? Wow, that'd be a big snowman. Would you put the carrot on his nose? On your snowman's nose? Where'd you put it? He just, he was eating carrots. And if you were to take a gift to baby Jesus, what would you bring him? Um, art. One of a car or something. Spider-Man. Spider-Man? Nice. A kite. That's an engine. Um, benches. I'm gonna bring him uh, a flute. Who is Jesus' mom? Mary. Mary? And who was his daddy? Joseph. Joseph. You ready to tell me some stories? No? Can you tell me the story of baby Jesus when he was born? What happened? He died. Mary was going to have a baby. And his name was Jesus. And what kind of animal did Mary ride on? I see. Where did Mary have her baby Jesus? In the barn. It was him. What animals were in the barn? A lot. A, a cat? A elephant. A cat? Mm-hmm. I don't know. A monkey. A giraffe. A pig. 
cakes and even horses. I know I saw the bunny. And there's a, a penguin. Do you have a favorite Christmas song? Snowflake, snowflake, little snowflake, falling, 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 falling on my head. That's a Christmas song. Snowflake, snowflake, falling on your nose. Snowflake, snowflake. I already know all my songs. <laughs> Let's go back to the sermon. Let's go to Romans chapter 1, verse 3. I want to read this to you. Paul is writing. Um, it says here, well, let me just read from the beginning. It says, Paul, a slave of Christ, called as an apostle and single out for God's good news, which he promised long ago through his prophets and the Holy Scriptures. I like that. Good news. Jesus is the good news. The gospel of the good news is Jesus Christ. Coming for you and I, dying for you and I, being born for you and I. If, if you've ever wondered whether or not God loves you, you know, put that to rest. I'm going to tell you, God loves you very much. Very, very much. And this is the fruition of it. This is the culmination of it. What a wonderful, wonderful thing that's gone on here. He said, that which is promised long ago through the prophets in the scriptures. Did you know that every scripture, every Bible uh, book of the, every book of the Bible has within it many, many prophetic words concerning the Messiah. And I think that's awesome that God did that. Then it says here, uh, concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was a descendant of David according to the flesh and was established as the powerful son of God by the resurrection from the dead. It says, according to the flesh, a son of David according to the flesh. That's very, very important because one of the prophetic words uh, uttered many, many years ago was that through the throne of David, this authority, this godly authority, this messianic savior authority would rule forever and ever without end. And so that is happening right now. Jesus is a savior. He has been raised up. He's sitting right now at the right hand of God. And that authority is going to rule forever and ever and ever until the very end of the age. So we are in a great time right now. God is doing some wonderful things. Um, let's turn to 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. And here's another great scripture. These will be, all be New Testament scriptures now. 1 John 3, verse 8. I love this verse. It says here, um, it says, The one who commits sin is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. And listen to this now. The Son of God, that's Jesus, right? The Son of God was revealed for this purpose, to destroy the devil's works, to destroy the devils of work. How many of you know that the very first prophetic word in Genesis said that by this seed that would come through a woman would crush the head of Satan? So that crushing the head of Satan means that he crushes the authority that Satan has over the people on the earth. And really the authority that Satan has over the people of the earth comes through the fact that mankind is sinful. And this sinful nature that mankind operated in for years and years and years is the very reason, it's the very, it's the very reason why the devil has been able to operate through mankind. He gets a foothold in man through sin. And then Jesus came to destroy the works of the enemy. That means God came, sent Jesus to destroy sin in mankind. So you know what, that's, that's great because now we don't have to sin. The sin nature is, is gone. When you receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, and you become saved, and you accept this wonderful, what we call Christmas sacrifice that went on, your sins are forgiven, and we are a changed people. And now the devil has no hold in our lives. His works are being destroyed right now, even as we speak, even as we stand here right now. I love this scripture, that finally what was spoken 4,000 years ago has come to pass. The works of the devil have been destroyed. And so I, th I just find that fascinating. So we can be free from our sins because sin is what separated us from God. The Bible says that all men have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And really it was this sin that happened uh, 4,000 years ago that has continually caused a 
a rift or a division between God the Father and his children. And, and when that happened many years ago, God said, you know what? I need to find a way right now to restore that relationship that I originally wanted for my people. And that's what he's been trying to do for 4,000 years is to bring back that relationship that he once had with Adam and Eve. And thank God through Jesus, that has been restored. Every person that's in Christ now has a relationship with the Heavenly Father. And that's always been the heart of God. That's how much he loves you and I. I am so thankful right now that I can look up and talk to my Heavenly Father anytime and he can talk to me and we have a great relationship. And it's wonderful and it's all through Jesus. It's all through this Christmas story. Baby boy in Bethlehem He grew up to be a man Face the giants of the land Move the mountains by his hand Let's go back to the sermon. Um, the Christmas story is a wonderful story about the Savior that comes and saves us from sin. But listen to the scripture. It says, He also shared in this so that through his death he might destroy the one holding the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who were held in slavery all their lives by a fear of death. Did you know that mankind in the beginning when God made Adam and Eve was, were never to die? They were to live forever in that state as Adam and Eve? But when Adam and Eve sinned and they fell, death entered into the world. And you know what? Death was never Never a part of the plan of God. And even today, since that time, for thousands and thousands of years, I mean, what has man really been afraid of? They've been afraid of dying. How many people, everybody seems to have a fear of death. But you know what? As a believer now, in Christ right now, you do not have to fear death. Death is not the beginning of some horrible existence. It's not the, the end of a great life here on earth. You know what? Death is the beginning of eternal life with God. What a wonderful concept. What a wonderful, glorious 
future that we have. What a hope. I'm going to tell you, that's the glorious gospel of Jesus right now for you and I. That's why we have Christmas. That Jesus rose again, died for us, and brought us back into relationship so that, you know what? When I die, when I leave this physical body, you know, I don't have to worry. I don't have to cringe with fear. I don't have to be concerned. You know what? I know I'm going to be with my heavenly Father in heaven right now. And I'm going to be with him forever and ever. Whatever that is, wherever that is, to do whatever that he wants. And I'll tell you what, what an awesome privilege that is. Now, I also have to say this, that, you know, that if you're not in Christ... If you've never asked Jesus into your life, if you've, never, if you've never asked him to be the savior of your life, you know, you are still an eternal being. And if you were to die right now, this very instance, without Christ, then unfortunately there's another side to this, that one that most people don't like to talk about, but there's a side that you will then die, leave this body, and then you will live for eternity without Christ, without God. And uh, we know that in the Bible that that's a place called hell. It's a place of torment. And it's not the place God wants you to go to. Hell was designed for the devil and his angels. It was never designed for mankind. But through unbelief, people will choose to go there if they reject Jesus Christ, if they reject the salvation offered at this time. That's why Jesus came to die for you, to take your sins and to take your place so that you don't have to suffer an eternal eternity from with, you know, without God. Jesus is taking your place. That, my friend, is good news. That's the greatest news. That's why we have Christmas. That's why we celebrate. That's why we have Christmas trees and flashing lights and shiny presents and good food. It's supposed to be a celebration of what God has done for you and I. Oh, it's Christmas everywhere. Joy and peace rest in the air. Jesus is the one we share. It's Christmas. Can you hear the sweetest sound of loved ones gathered all around? While well, snow is falling on the ground, it's Christmas. Love is giving, truly living. Hearts are warmed with joy and cheer. It's Sharing hearts, preparing gifts of love to spread all year. It's Christmas. Oh, it's Christmas. Oh, Merry Christmas. Christmas candy, yummy treats, lights and ribbons on the tree, little ones with rosy cheeks. It's Christmas. Hear the children giggling and Christmas carolers jingling. Glory to the newborn king, it's Christmas. Love is giving, truly living. Hearts are warmed with joy and cheer, it's Christmas. People sharing, hearts preparing. Gifts of love to spread all year, it's Christmas.
Would you like to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life? Allowing the true hope, joy, and peace of the season to come alive on the inside? Then say this prayer after me. Say, Dear Jesus, forgive me of my sin and where I've gone wrong. I know you're the light in such a dark world, and I want you to shine in and through me. Come and be king of my life, and I will serve and follow you now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a very Merry Christmas. So I want to encourage you to put your faith in the Christ of Christmas. Put your faith. Though it's not just Christmas. You know, there's a lot of people right now who want to take the Christ out of Christmas. They want to call it, you know, the holy days or holidays and take Christ out. But you know what? We've got to leave Christ in Christmas because that's what this is all about. And I encourage you, put your faith in the Christ of Christmas this year. And I guarantee you, this will be the best Christmas you'll ever have. Jesus will come in. The Holy Spirit will come in. Life will come in. The fear of death will go. And you know what? You're going to have a great life here on earth. So why Christmas? You know, now you know. In this conclusion, if you've watched all three, and if you haven't watched all, I encourage you to go onto our website, faithalive.com. Dot TV, and then just go on and click back and look at the last two episodes and really look at why Christmas. And, and if you're just hearing me now for the first time, you might be thinking, well, he's just going to talk about presents and things like that. No, I went back 4,000 or 6,000 years to talk about what God did at the beginning and all the way down through history to now to prove his love to mankind. And this is the truth about Christmas, that Jesus, our Savior, is born on Christmas Day to prove God's love to mankind and that what he had initially promised to Adam and Eve he is still carrying out today. What a hope! What a great God that we have! What a great God that we serve! And I'm so excited and privileged to tell you this. So put, put your faith in Christ. See now you have a reason to celebrate. Now you have a reason to celebrate with the rest of us the goodness of God and this is why we have Christmas. So why Christmas? Because Jesus has come, a fulfillment of many, many years of what God has promised, to deliver you from sin and from death and to give you eternal life. And I pray that this has blessed you and helped you and, and helped you to understand why we do Christmas. So I'm just going to leave you right there. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. We love you. And I know this, that God loves you very much. God bless you. Do you have a testimony or prayer request? Would you like to contact us? You can reach us at 306 652-2230 or by email at info at We look forward to hearing from you soon.